So I've had these Meta Ray-Ban AI glasses for over a week now. I've been testing them like crazy and they're actually really good, but not necessarily for the reason you think. They're not only sunglasses, they're not only a camera device and they have two cameras right there, but you can ask Meta AI any question using Llama 3. All you have to say is, Hey Meta. So I'm gonna tell you everything that I've learned about them and why I've actually grown to love them. But again, not for the reason you think. So let's get into the review. All right, so I've split this review into a few different sections and let me tell you what they're gonna be. So first setup, form factor, the camera slash hardware, artificial intelligence, some problems that I faced, and then my overall thoughts on this device. So first, let me talk about the setup. It was really easy. This is the case they came in. It says Ray-Ban on it. It has this really cool glowing circle. So you can definitely tell it's different from just a regular pair of glasses. And so all I had to do was turn it on, then I downloaded the app on my phone, then all I had to do was link my Facebook account. Now, I am not a Facebook user. In fact, I don't even remember the last time I logged into Facebook. So I couldn't use a lot of the functionality, like being able to speak a message I wanna send over Messenger or WhatsApp. I also couldn't use the live streaming capabilities, but I probably wouldn't have used those anyways. But overall, the setup was dead simple. And in fact, importing photos is also really simple. So one of the coolest parts of these glasses is that they actually have cameras on them, one on this side and one on the other side over here. And so you can take pictures really easily. And then all you have to do is open up the app and then it tells you you have images to import, you leave the app open and it downloads your images for you. Very, very simple to use. And now let's move on to the form factor because I think that's really where it gets interesting. These, at the end of the day, are sunglasses, at least for me. You can get non-shaded lenses and you can also get prescription lenses put in them. So it might be different for other people, but for me, they're sunglasses because I don't wear prescription glasses. And so here's the thing about sunglasses. You only really wear them outside. I think the most I wore them is when I was taking hikes and walking around and also driving in my car. And then at night, I don't wear them. So let's talk about that form factor. If you're gonna make sunglasses, just by definition, your users aren't gonna wear them half of the day. And I actually think that's kind of a problem because if Meta really wants to integrate AI into my life, the glasses form factor is not gonna cover every use case that I need. And so there are very specific times where I wear sunglasses and when I am wearing them, they are absolutely awesome. But when they're off, I can't use them. I can't use them to take pictures. I can't use it to ask AI questions. I think that's a problem. And maybe what they're thinking is they're gonna come out with other hardware devices that accommodate any time of day usage. But when I am wearing them, they're great and they feel just like glasses. I mean, they are glasses. They don't feel any bulkier. They don't feel any heavier. And here's a real testament to how good the form factor is. When I put them on, in a couple minutes, I forget I'm wearing anything but just normal sunglasses. And there's a few things to know about the actual hardware. On the inside right here, there's an on off button that you can flip. On the top of the glasses, there's a physical button that you push and that is a dedicated camera button. You push it once, it takes a photo, you hold it down and it starts taking a video. The video is 60 seconds long maximum. When you are recording or when you're taking a picture, there's this little light right here that you can barely see out of your peripheral vision that tells you that you just took a photo or that you are currently recording. The last button, the last input on this is on the right side of the actual arm of the glasses and it's touch sensitive. So you can tap it, you can swipe forward and you can swipe back and then you can also long hold. And that controls everything from playing music to increasing and decreasing the volume and things like that. Now here's something really interesting that I found out. So imagine you're wearing these glasses and the cameras are right here. Now. I was wearing a hat one day with these glasses and the brim of the hat went out to about here. And so since the camera's here and it took a photo, the hat was actually blocking part of the photo. But here's the really cool thing. In my ear, and I'll get to this in a second, it actually told me your hat is blocking the photo. It actually said that to me after it took the photo. It says, 
that your hat is blocking the photo. So that is incredible that it can recognize what was happening and actually told me. Now that's one thing I forgot to mention. On the bottom of both sides of the arms of the glasses, there are speakers and they are directional speakers. And it feels very much like the Apple Vision Pro. They're not sitting in your ear, they're sitting right above your ear, directed at your ear. And it is really clear, which was really impressive. I was impressed with the Apple Vision Pro and I'm very impressed with this. So when you put them on, they connect to your phone via Bluetooth and you can play music on them. You can hear notifications from them. Obviously you can talk to Meta AI because that's a big part of these glasses is being able to ask AI any question. So the speakers work incredibly well. And I actually found myself using them a lot. So when somebody would call, I would answer and just talk. Nobody around me could really hear the speakers, but I heard them perfectly. Now, if it's loud around you, the sound kind of gets diluted a bit, but overall, it was pretty great. And of course, as glasses, just as the standalone glasses, they're fantastic. They're Ray-Bans, they're high quality, the plastic feels great. The build quality feels fine. So everything about them feels really good and they are just sunglasses. And when you're ready to charge them, you fold them up, you put them back into the case just like so, and they start charging. And this little light will turn on telling you that they're charging. And if you can see right in the nose, there are two little charging things that are exposed and that is what connects right there into the glasses case. So really cool. And of course, just like if you have any kind of AirPods, the case itself gets charged, stores battery, and then when you put the glasses into the case, they charge the glasses as well. And they have a USB-C charging port at the bottom, just right there. So very easy, very straightforward. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Vulture. Reap the benefits of the world's largest independent cloud provider when you bring your GPU workloads over to Vulture. They have the latest NVIDIA GPUs spanning 32 locations across six continents. Vulture delivers industry-leading price to performance and serious accessibility and reliability. Vulture's global, fully composable cloud infrastructure moves your applications closer to your users and frees you from vendor lock-in, allowing you to bring your own network and database solutions. And if you need to scale beyond just a single cluster, Vulture's Kubernetes engine allows you to take full control over your deployment, offering up a 100% free control plane. So if you're tired of waiting for GPUs from other providers, make sure to use Vulture. You can deploy at any scale immediately, and they have H100s, L40s, and more available right now. And you can get a fraction of a card or fully dedicated bare metal systems, which gives you full control over your hardware and your throughput. They also have one-click installation of all the applications you might need for advanced machine learning workloads, allowing you to get up and running in minutes, not hours. So experience the Vulture difference. Don't get bogged down by severe wait times or limited locations. Try it free today with a $300 credit for your first 30 days when you visit getvulture.com slash Berman. And make sure to use code Berman300 at checkout to get that credit. Thanks again to Vulture for sponsoring this video. Let's talk about AI now for a second. So the big selling point of these glasses is the fact that you have AI with you at any time. You can ask questions to it, get answers, and it also has visual input. So you could say, hey Meta, take a look, what do you see? and it will tell you what it sees. You can look at a plant and say, what kind of plant is this? You could pretty much do anything like that. And it works pretty well. And the AI works pretty well. It has your location information, so you can ask what the weather is and stuff like that. But here's the thing. It turns out I don't actually have a ton of questions to ask AI throughout the day. I'd say I used it maybe 10 times throughout the whole day, just asking questions that I actually needed answers to, and maybe only half of them I really needed answers to. The other half I was just trying trying to test out the capabilities. So it's really interesting in that sense. And it got me thinking, I think this is why agents are so powerful. Now, if I had AI in my ears at all times where it was actually able to go out and accomplish tasks for me, that's really the golden use case. If I'm able to just walk on the beach, for example, and my agent says, hey, you have a new email from a sponsor who wants to sponsor your channel. And all I have to say is, okay, who is it? And uh, yeah, go ahead and reply, send them the rates, and uh, then it does it automatically for me. That is really my perfect use case. 
just being able to ask questions throughout the day is nice, but not really required in my life. Now I'll say the only exception to that is when I'm driving. When I'm driving in the car and I think of something that I need to know in that moment, I can't take my phone out and start typing because I'm driving. So having a hands-free way to interact with an entire knowledge base is really convenient. All you have to do, as I said, is say, hey, Meta. You get a little ding in your ear and then you ask a question. And it's pretty fast. It's faster than the Rabbit device. It's faster certainly than the AI pin, although I haven't tested the AI pin myself, but it seems like it's faster because that seems really slow. And again, you can ask it any question. So it's pretty good and it's using Llama 3 to power it. So the AI is there and the potential is there, but until a meta agent is actually able to accomplish things on my behalf, there's still a lot to be desired. And that's why I think Facebook or meta is actually at a disadvantage here compared to Apple and Google. Apple and Google have all of your information. If you use an iPhone, it has everything that you ever do on that iPhone. If you use an Android or any of the Google products, it has all of your information in there. And so they can make agents that can perform tasks on your behalf because it has access to all of your information and all of your accounts. Meta does not have that. That's why I think Apple, when they finally release their updated Siri, it's gonna be really compelling. And there were a lot of times where I wished I could just say, hey Meta, write a text message to this person, write a telegram message to this person, write me an email, but I couldn't. I couldn't. The only thing you could do is Messenger and WhatsApp. I don't use either of those. I couldn't control anything on my phone. So it's really a big missed opportunity. And I'm not sure what Meta is going to do to close that gap between the data that they have access to and the data that Apple and Google have access to. That is also why I think OpenAI might be at a disadvantaged position. But overall, the AI works really well. It hallucinates sometimes obviously, because it's still AI, it's still early days of large language models, but overall, very cool. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I love these glasses, but not for the reason you think. I thought I was gonna get them and just absolutely fall in love with the AI part of the glasses, the AI functionality, but it turns out I actually love the picture taking. I love the camera and it takes great photos. It takes one minute long videos and there's two things that I really like about it. One, not having to take my phone out of my pocket to take a photo. I know it seems like that's such a small thing to do to get the photo, but I found myself taking probably 10 times as many photos just because I had this on. And not only that, you're taking photos and videos completely hands-free. You can say, hey Meta, take a photo. Hey Meta, take a video. Of course you could push the button up here, but I was frequently doing something and just saying, hey Meta, take a photo. And here's the thing, when you're wearing these glasses, the photo is coming from your first person view. It is exactly what you have seen. So it's a really interesting way to take photos because you know if you take out your phone, you're holding it in front of you, you're holding it lower. So it looks like it was taken with a camera. With this, it looks like that is what you were looking at. So I really love it for that reason. And again, because I wear sunglasses, I have no problem wearing these. They feel just like sunglasses, but now I have a camera available to me at any time. The photos and the videos themselves are vertical. I think it's probably one by two is my guess, or maybe two by three in terms of dimensions, which is fine. I prefer horizontal photos, landscape photos, but that's totally fine. And the photos themselves are 1080p, I believe, perfectly good enough for what I need them for. If I really wanna take an amazing photo, I'll take my iPhone out. And I know a lot of you camera enthusiasts are probably thinking, wow, Matt thinks the best photo he can take is on his phone, but yeah, that's all I really need. Let's talk about the batteries. The batteries lasted a very long time. I was using these for hours. I would say three, four, five hours, constant usage, taking dozens and dozens of photos and videos. And after those, let's say four, four and a half hours, it was down to 60% battery life. So these batteries lasted a long time. And not only that, you have multiple recharges through the glasses case. So plenty of battery use. I'm very impressed with the battery life that they got into these glasses. And I already talked about the speakers. They are good, not audiophile level speakers, but for talking on the phone, if you don't want to have something in your ear or you're walking around, you wanna answer your phone without actually taking your phone out of your pocket, these are perfectly sufficient for that. Now a few problems. This 
button right here that takes photos and videos is exactly where you put your finger to put the glasses on and off. And that means I was constantly accidentally triggering the photo and taking a photo when I did not intend to. Not the biggest deal, but then I also don't want these random photos of usually the ground or the sky or something in my photo stream. Again, not a huge deal. And of course, another problem, it hallucinates. It's still artificial intelligence. It's still early days of large language models. And yes, they do give false answers sometimes. So I would ask it about something and it would confidently give me an answer, especially about, let's say I'm at a location. I say, hey, what are some good restaurants around me? It would tell me things that were just not there. So that is gonna be a problem that will be solved in the long run. But the nice thing is the meta AI does have access to the internet so it can do some searches on your behalf and it does have real-time information. The Hey Meta sometimes didn't work. There were a lot of times actually where I would say, Hey Meta, ask it a question. It would just lag out. It would just not do anything, which was frustrating, especially in the moment. And it got so bad. I asked it a question. It sounded like it was going to do something. And then it completely broke. Like it wouldn't answer. And then going forward, Hey Meta did not work. I couldn't get it to work. I reset my app. I reset the glasses. And then finally, I actually had to do a hard reset on the glasses to get it to work again. And so, uh, yeah, still a little bit buggy. That only happened once, but Hey Meta occasionally would not work. And so that's it. Overall, I love these glasses. I really do. Having AI in your ear is good. Having the cameras available to you in a hands-free way at any time is incredible. Plus, I love the look. They're just awesome Ray-Ban glasses. The price point is pretty good, anywhere from $300 to $500, depending on what you choose. And yeah, overall, I can highly recommend these glasses. If you wear sunglasses or if you wear prescription glasses and you want AI in your ear and you want a camera available to you at any time in a hands-free way, these are awesome. These are now my daily driver sunglasses. So. Yes, I am recommending these glasses. Very cool, check them out. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.